Welcome everyone. In this video we are going to look at another Peltier cooler based uh, cooler. And uh, what I show you is basically two different systems here. So I want to mix uh, some stuff. But uh, basically what we have is this system. So you can usually buy these things on the internet for quite a cheap uh, price. So what they sell to you is this uh, cooler and this is supposed to cool the hot side of the Peltier cooler and uh, we have this fan attached to the uh, larger heat sink here so it's a regular 8 centimeter 12 volt uh, fan they usually supply it with a uh, cover so you cannot stick your finger inside this uh, spinning fan and then usually it's uh, sold with a 5 ampere unit but in this demonstration i will use an 8 ampere unit and they sell this kind of uh, ceiling so it's basically just some uh, insulating foam to separate the hot and the cold side better and surround the edges of the Peltier cooler and then on the other side so this is supposed to go on the on the cold side of the Peltier cooler and uh, sometimes they also supply a 4x4 centimeter fan so as you can see it fits nicely on this uh, heat sink right here and then you can circulate the air that you want to cool down with this uh, heat sink and of course there are some screws and a very small amount of uh, thermal grease instead of using this I will use my regular thermal grease in this experiment so uh, once again, so they use this kind of heat sink to cool the hot side, so which is usually without the text. And then you just put this on, of course with some thermal grease, and then sandwich it like this. And then you have this kind of uh, stuff. So this is the hot side, which is cooled by this fan, and this is the cold side. And you circulate the air with another fan if you want. But uh, in this demonstration, uh, I will do some different experiment so first of all I get rid of this and I don't need this because I will do something else so I will put this thing on the cold side of the Peltier cooler and that's why I showed this big uh, CPU cooler that, as you can see it has a very big uh, surface uh, this is a nice uh, copper heat pipe and what is nice about this cooler is that it perfectly fits the 4x4 four four, uh, centimeter uh, Peltier cooler. So what I have, I have this aluminum profile which goes under this thing and then this will be my uh, support let's say. So hot side goes on this so we cool the hot side with a relatively large performance cooler and then the cold side instead of uh, attaching this I will attach this bigger uh, surface like this so it will look like this and we will see how much we can go down in the temperature with this very large heat sink attached to it either with this fan or without the fan and basically this will be just some kind of experiment so nothing uh, will be really concluded here but I want to show you that you can build this uh, nice uh, cooler with this kind of things and uh, basically why I do this is I want to see uh, the temperature of this uh, heat sink with this 8 ampere unit and then maybe after uh, trying it on the free air so in my room I will put this in a box so what I will do I will make a polystyrene foam box or, or some box which is well insulated and in the inside I will have this on, on let's say on the wall of in, in, in the inner wall of this uh, insulated box and this will be outside and we will see uh, if we can build for example a small refrigerator or freezer even or, or something like that so that is today's topic 
And here, as I said, I will use this 8 ampere unit. And what you should know about the 8 ampere unit is that the cooling power of this is between 81 and 89 watts. It depends on the temperature of the hot side. And uh, yeah, as I said, this is 8 amperes, so the maximum current that you can run through this device is 8 amperes. And then again, depending on the hot side temperature, so how well you can cool the hot side, the maximum uh, voltage that you need to provide the 8 amper current is between 16.2, 17.3 volts. And this means that by just running this device and not considering the cooling power, you put roughly 130, 140 watts on the hot side. And also, if you cool something with it, that's an additional uh, term. So at the end, when you run this in an optimal condition and on the maximum um, performance, that means that you are putting roughly 230 watts on the hot side. So you need some very good cooler, which can be this, uh, to cool the hot side uh, sufficiently and dissipate 230 watts of uh, rejected heat. But I think that this cooler is around 150 watts, if I'm not mistaken. I tried to find some kind of uh, handbooks for this, but, uh, but I could not find any uh, useful information, but uh, based on the number of heat pipes and uh, just by the, sh the size of this thing, I assume that this is capable of dissipating 150 watt uh, power. And uh, we can use some other tricks to further improve this uh, dissipation, but let's say this is 150. So uh, what this suggests that we will not be able to run this on the maximum performance. So maybe we can only run it on, let's say, 50-75% of performance. So our cooling power will be, let's say, somewhere between 40 to 60 watts. But we will see what we can do with that. And I will do uh, a lot of different things, like measuring, of course, the power running through this, so current and voltage. And also I will measure the temperature on, on both sides, so on the hot side and on this, uh, on the surface of this. So I will put some thermometers inside the fin as close as possible to this uh, solid uh, part of the uh, heat sink. And then uh, we will see what happens. So now what I will do is I will get rid of these uh, screws and stuff which I used for uh, demonstration. And then I will assemble this thing. And I, I will show you all the steps and have some explanations. I don't really have to explain these things because it's relatively uh, simple, but maybe I can share some tips and tricks with you which might be useful. So uh, let's, uh, let's start assembling the things. So first of all, we will need this uh, CPU cooler here. So you can see it has uh, six uh, heat, sink, heat pipes. And then there is an eight centimeter fan inside it with a three pin uh, connection. So now if you look at this three pin, I hope that you can see it properly. So you see two notches on both sides. So if it faces like you, so the side with the two notches is facing downwards, then the polarity or the pins are the following. So this pin on the rightmost uh, side, just above this notch, is the ground. And then in the middle, you have the 12 volt uh, power supply. And on the left side, above the other notch, uh, you have the signal. So this is not a PWM controlled uh, fan, but it can give you a feedback about the uh, speed of the fan. So you know by the uh, signal read from this uh, third pin that the RPM is at this or that uh, value. But we will not use that. So I cover this just with my finger. So ground 
in the right side and uh, 12 volt on the middle or in the middle of this uh, connector. So I will just simply use some 12 volt power supply and power this. So what we need here is we have to clean this surface nicely. So I have some kind of uh, towel here which has some kind of cleaning agent just to make sure that uh, we have everything nice and clean, no grease. So the thermal grease will adhere to the surface in a better way maybe. And you can see that this is more or less uh, nicely polished so it reflects the lights very nicely. So what we need here is we need to use some thermal grease and uh, I will use just uh, this thermal grease with this uh, big bucket and we have to make sure that uh, this is well uh, stirred because sometimes there can be some sort of sedimentation uh, going on in this and then the components can separate which means that uh, some of the parts uh, will be separated and then uh, when you apply it on the surface you will not apply the wall grease on it but maybe just the grease part and not the component which is the uh, let's say active component of this stuff so always spend some time and try to homogenize this thing by stirring it of course you will baste a little bit on your fingers and uh, on the spoon but it worth it So uh, I don't know how much we need, but I will apply some and uh, I will clean it up later on. But this is roughly like a bean sized. And then, yeah, this looks messed up, but just bear with me. But uh, make sure that you cover all the surface and it doesn't matter if it's too thick because when you squeeze together the two heat sinks, so this part and this part here, then the excess amount will be uh, squeezed out as well. So I would say that there is not, there is no too much amount of thermal grease, uh, at least up to a certain amount, but there can be too few. So always apply a bit more than a bit less. So what I do now, I try to remove some of the excess because you just want to have a thin layer of uh, thermal grease in between the two layers uh, in between uh, the layer which is the metal of the uh, heat sink and the back of this so the cold uh, the hot side of this thing so i just put this aside because i will need it just clean my fingers so this is done and just before proceeding, I will put this uh, two by two centimeter aluminum profile under it. This is a very nice thing because as you can see, it fits almost firmly in between the fan and the back side of the uh, cooler. And that is very good because now what I can do, I have this uh, so-called T nut, this guy here. So as you can see, the T-nut goes perfectly inside this channel. So then I will use this aluminum profile and this screw to fix uh, the other side of the uh, heat sink on this uh, system. So this heat sink will go on the cold side of, of this patio unit. And then as you can see there is a plastic washer here or sleeve. So this is also a small nice thing. So actually only this plastic sleeve uh, touching the hole here. So there is an additional protection against the heat uh, traveling towards the uh, cold side of the patio cooler through the screw. So that, that's nice. So we have this, everything is set up. So we want to cool the hot side of the patio cooler and that is this guy here without the text. So you just make sure that you uh, put it on properly and always think about how you align your cables, where you want to have the cables. That's important. 
So now I just uh, squeeze out some excess amount of uh, uh, grease by just uh, moving it a little bit like a circular motion. And then you can see that there is a little bit of excess uh, thermal grease coming out, but not too much. And I will use some Q-tip uh, later on just to remove this uh, extra stuff. But it doesn't make too much mess, so I'm fine with it. So now uh, I try to clean this a little bit. You can see some marks from the previous experiments. And now I apply the uh, grease straight on this. But before that, I try to center uh, the Peltier cooler by uh, putting this foam on. So I, I want to put, so this thing, as you can see the holes, it, I will just flip it and put it on the Peltier cooler like this. So you have to observe that your cables are going, or at least my cables, they are coming in this direction. So it will go like this. Therefore, this has to be put here. And uh, yeah, roughly in the middle. So you can, let's say, uh, adjust the middle to the middle of this uh, notch here. So all I just do, just a little bit of cleaning. And then there is an adhesive layer here. You just remove this thing. And then I try not to mess it up. So something like this. And you might say that, oh, I was wrong because the holes are like this. Well, yes, but I don't want to align my things uh, like that. So I can just poke a hole through this. It doesn't really matter. So you just take something, uh, even a piece of wooden stick, and then you just poke through this thing here and also here. And then the screw will go through this uh, perfectly. So no worries. So this is done. This is clean. So either you put the grease on this or on this uh, notch or on this area. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, let's put it here. So again, roughly the same amount and you just uh, try to spread it nicely. This might take some more extra time. So it's done. It's a nice homogeneous layer, more or less. So uh, before proceeding, you make sure again that uh, it's more or less centered. And then you see these uh, notches here and there, and that should be aligned with the cable. So you put it on the Peltier cooler like that. So you can see it. So now the way we uh, put the pressure on this thing is that we have to screw this thing on. So as you can see, uh, I did it and uh, it's more or less stable. So the trick here is that you want to apply the pressure by these two screws here, uh, little by little. So what I mean there is that you should not fully uh, tighten this screw here and then tighten this screw, but you screw this a little bit and then go to the other side and screw a little bit roughly by the same amount as this and then you go back and tighten it and then tighten it because if you just uh, screw one side totally then one thing is that the contact between the surface of this uh, heatsink and the surface of the Peltier will not be uh, flat and that's a huge problem. And then also you can uh, crack the sensitive ceramic plate on the uh, Peltier cooler. So that's that's not so good. And now I just try to do this kind of motion here. And you can see it's a solid contact. So that means that preferably 
I uh, screwed this together nicely. There is a very, very small uh, movement, but that is okay. So you should not tight it too much, of course, because you will crush the ceramic, but there should be a tight enough contact. So you see that the patio is surrounded nicely everywhere. There is just a little gap here, but it doesn't really matter. So everything is good, as you can see. So now what I will do, uh, I will just connect a few uh, things. Uh, I have my power meter and thermometer, so I will measure uh, yeah, somewhere here uh, the temperature and also the temperature here. And we will see how this thing behaves under different uh, conditions. So I assembled a lot of things here. So let me explain it quickly. This is my uh, power meter for the Peltier cooler. So I can measure the voltage and the current running through the Peltier device. And also I can measure the temperature by two K-type thermocouples. And uh, the intention of this is to measure the cold side and to measure the hot side, which uh, will be just the outlet temperature of the air coming out from the uh, heatsink of the uh, CPU cooler. But I will have this infrared thermometer just to check on the surface of the uh, cold side heatsink. I have this clamp uh, power meter or multimeter, so I will be able to measure the current by just doing this. And also I will measure the uh, voltage and see if it differs from the values seen here. Uh, the fan of this is already running, maybe you will hear it. And uh, it's blowing out the air in the back side of this device, so it's sucking the air from here and pushing it towards that direction. So the fan is running. So what I will do, I will power up this thing and uh, just run it at let's say two amperes and uh, see what happens to the cold side. So now the power is uh, connected, but I haven't applied any kind of uh, voltage or current. So I just go up until two amperes will go through the device. So according to the power supply now, we are at 2 amperes, and this guy here shows 2.2 amperes, and if I measure it with this, we measure 2 amperes here. So now this is the T1 temperature here, which is 21.6 and the T2 temperature right here, uh, which is the air uh, going through the fan is 28.5 degrees. So it went up slightly, but uh, we can see what happens after a little time. I try to adjust uh, this. So basically this is a K-type thermocouple. So the two wires are welded together by usually spot welding. And uh, that is the point where you measure the temperature. And now I try to adjust this by putting it somewhere in between the fins, roughly halfway in the uh, cooler. So this surface out here is showing 22 degrees Celsius. But if I go deeper, because I pushed the thermometer in between the fins and touching almost the solid surface. So if I just uh, demonstrate it on this, then it's almost touching this surface uh, of the heat sink here. So then it's closer to the, let's say, source of the cold. Now I can feel that this is getting really cold. So th this is very cold now. Uh, for, for the touch, all, all, all of its all of its parts. So the voltage here is 4.7, that's correct as well. And the current is 2 amperes, uh, which is also quite close to the measurement done by this. So I, if I check it, it's 1.8. So 0 0.2 amperes uh, difference. Actually, that's 10%, uh, but uh, still, 
uh, it's relatively close. So now it's showing 20 degrees. And this is just 2 amperes. So let's see if I go up to 3 amperes, uh, what happens? So this is roughly 3 amperes now. And we wait a little bit. So now you see that the temperature here will drop down 9.5 degrees. The output temperature, so the temperature on the other side, so somewhere here on the top top of the screen basically, uh, or the top of the image that you can see, uh, that is 31 degrees. That indicates that the CPU cooler can still uh, catch up with the generated heat on the Peltier cooler. Now the temperature is 7.4 degrees, so that's very promising. Also, if I just measure the surface, then I can read, let's say, 17 degrees Celsius or 14.6, depending on how I measure it, because uh, it's difficult to measure with this device, with this kind of this kind of geometry and surface. But yeah, the temperature is going down. Also here, uh, it was it is 5.8 degrees. While the hot side is 31 degrees. And actually, I just measured, let's see, the wall uh, next to me, that's 26. So the room temperature is also very high now. Uh, it's a hot summer day again. So, yeah. So what we see here, actually, we also calculate the DT if we show the temperature, but we also calculate the power, just the power running through the Peltier cooler, which is the product of the voltage and current. So I times U, and that is 25 watts. So we are feeding 25 watts to this uh, Peltier cooler, and uh, yeah, we have these temperatures. So now it's 4.5 degrees on the cold side. And I actually started to see some uh, water on the surface. I don't know if you can see the tip of my finger, but it's wet. So if I just, yeah, you see the water. So now the humidity of the air started to condensate, condensate which means that uh, the surface of the heat sink, now you see it here, is below the dew point. And uh, yeah, so let's go to 4 amperes and uh, see what happens. So that's half of the uh, maximum current of this device because, yeah, if you remember, then there is a TEC12708, so an 8 ampere unit under this uh, heatsink here. So now the temperature of the hot side or the outlet temperature, so the air which is coming out, is 33 degrees so we have now more heat generated also here it went up a little bit so now the power going through the Peltier cooler is 44 watts so 10.2 uh, volts and uh, 4.3 amperes based on this reading uh, take it with a grain of salt so there can be, let's say, 5 to 10 percent error in the readings of the current and uh, the readings of the voltage, but it's okay. So now the temperature is 1.5 degrees, so actually it's almost freezing in between the uh, fins there. And just to remind you again that this wall surface, which is now a big surface because it's a heat sink, is exposed to the room. And the room temperature right here is 26, 27 degrees. Also, right under this cold side heat sink, this big guy, I'm running uh, the cooling of the hot side. So actually, let's say in this volume, maybe we have even higher uh, temperature of air because uh, I haven't separated physically the hot side and the cold side. Uh, so this I think with separation this would be already under uh, zero degrees, that's for sure. So now you can see that we are using, let's say, 44 watts, which is just the power consumption of the unit. And the DT, so the temperature difference between the hot side and the cold side, based on the readings, which can be a little bit off, is roughly 34 degrees Celsius. 
So actually, based on the readings of the voltage here, which is 10.2 volts, and based on the current, which is, let's say, 4.2 amperes, and the DT, I can determine the uh, cooling power, which is now on this uh, heatsink. So I will do some calculations and uh, put some subtitles here or some text here just to show you the estimated uh, cooling power right now. So let's increase the current to 5 uh, amps. So now I went up to 5 amps because we are really close to the freezing point of the water uh, right here. So actually now we are at minus 0 0.2 degrees. So we are below uh, zero degrees and now the applied power so i times u is 70 watts so 70 watts just the heat from the uh, hot side or just from running the device is ending up on the cpu cooler and i can feel that the heat pipes are like a little bit warm if i touch them and let's measure the temperature. So this is the surface temperature right here with the infrared thermometer. And then the hot side temperature also raised. So now it's 36 uh, degrees Celsius. But uh, inside the fins of the heat sink, close to the surface of the uh, cold side, uh, the temperature is minus one degrees. So let's discuss a few things here. Uh, I saw a comment uh, that one person was complaining about wires getting hot. So if I touch these wires, they are not hot at all because they are properly sized uh, to the to the Pelletier cooler, of course. And as you can see that these are relatively thin cables, so their diameter is not that uh, huge. But uh, if you get hot wires uh, while running uh, the Pelletier cooler, uh, for example, I have much thicker wires here, which are running towards the uh, power meter. Uh, these are each, each of them, I think 2.5 uh, square millimeters uh, inside, so they are quite thick. And uh, yeah, so if you have uh, wires which are getting hot or getting warm, then you should increase their diameter and also you should uh, try to uh, decrease the length. So you don't want to have unnecessarily uh, long uh, cables that can also like slightly increase their resistance. Maybe it doesn't matter in this kind of uh, application, but also it's a nice uh, safety factor to have uh, as short as possible wires for your application. It looks nice and it makes everything a bit more safer. And also make sure that your contacts are very good. So you don't want uh, them to be loose and have some slack when they are inserted into the banana terminals or sockets, for example. Uh, you want them to be uh, solid. So make sure that all the connections are tightly screwed, tightly attached and uh, so on and so on. That That's also one thing. And now you might ask the question that Oh, I can see that now you have your heat sink at minus one degrees, minus 1.4 degrees. You have this small cooler and uh, you can ask the very popular question. Can I build an air conditioner? Uh, the answer is no. And why I say this is that because with an air conditioner, you want to cool down your room and your room is, let's say, let's say it's a smaller room. so. Uh, 4 by uh, 3 meters, let's say, and uh, 2.53 meters in height. So that's relatively large volume of air. And you just have this uh, small device. And this device, at this point, I think it's uh, giving roughly 40 watts of cooling power. And if you think about the regular ACs, which are using uh, conventional compressor-based uh, pumps and so on, and uh, they are usually providing 1.52 kilowatts of uh, cooling power. So roughly 30 uh, to 50 times more than we are at right now, if we assume that this is like 40, 50 watts. So 30 to 40 times uh, higher cooling power. So you need 30 or 40 of this 
to cool your room properly. Uh, this can be used for small cooling boxes and it can be used for like very small volumes. Uh, that, that could work, but uh, to make it into an air conditioner, that's, that's not the best idea. And I can show you something that if I force air uh, through this thing, then the temperature of this will significantly increase. And that's basically equivalent with some, uh, let's say, thermal load. So what I will do now, uh, I will try to attach some uh, fan on the surface of this thing and, and just see what happens. So now the fan is blowing fresh air on the heat sink and you can see that the temperature immediately went up uh, to now 5 degrees, 7 degrees. So actually with this setting uh, we can wait uh, for a few minutes and see what will be the equilibrium. Right now I can feel a very nice uh, cold air, a cold breeze uh, running in the room, but that was a sort of a cheating because we had this huge uh, piece of aluminium co cooled down to minus one degrees, let's say. Now we are just simplifying. And then we introduced the airflow. So we sort of accumulated some uh, cold, uh, maybe this is not the best phrasing, but we accumulated some cold. And because of that, uh, we were able to uh, get out that uh, cold from this system. But as you see it now, the temperature now is 14.6 degrees Celsius, which is significantly higher than the minus one degrees. And in fact, if I measure the side, or it if I measure it here, you can see that this is pretty much room temperature now. And I can remove this. So now it's 15 degrees. So it seems like that the temperature of the heat sink right now is 15.5 degrees and it has been like that for a minute. So seems like this is a sort of stable temperature for this. And now this is interesting because actually it's blowing out some sort of colder air, colder than the room at least. So now let me try something because what we have here is, uh, I just model it with this. So this is the heat sink and there is a fan on top of this and now the air is going out from both sides of the heat sink. But now I will try to cover this side, uh, which is up uh, there. So I will have the cold air just coming out uh, on this side. and. Uh, I will just want to see something. So this is not the best technique that I use, but I just uh, cover it by a small piece of tape. So I will uh, force the air in one certain direction. So now the air is just coming out here. It has quite, quite noticeable pressure of course, it's not a big pressure, but uh, you can you can feel it. Uh, I don't know if I can visualize it, but so now the temperature here is 17 degrees Celsius, and the hot side is 40 degrees, and I can feel that it's hot, really hot, uh, on the back side. So the air which is coming out is it's really warm. But now here we have uh, 16 degrees, uh, 17 uh, degrees, so that's very nice. So after a few minutes we see that the temperature is now let's say 17 degrees and the hot side is getting really warm but it's not changing so now we are at 14.6 uh, uh, degrees. Uh, the heat pipes are noticeably warmer than the room temperature. I can keep my fingers on it without any problem so I can grab them but they are warm. Uh, this is the reading of the uh, heat pipe. And 
another reading, but uh, I could not align it properly. So now you can see that the temperature of the quartz side goes up slowly and slowly uh, and approaching the room temperature, but it's still like 10 degrees below the room temperature. So that's very nice. But the problem is that uh, now I think I push in uh, relatively warm air in this, which is warmer than the uh, room temperature, of course. So some, let's say, extra work has to be done by the cold side because it is not uh, sucking in the room temperature air, but uh, a room temperature plus a little bit extra because the hot side air is getting mixed with the room uh, air. So the hot side air is almost 41 degrees and uh, the room temperature is roughly 27 degrees. So there is a 14 uh, degrees uh, difference. And uh, let's say we are in the middle. So this thing is actually sucking in, let's say 35 degrees uh, Celsius air. Uh, but this is just a rough, rough estimation, so therefore the cold uh, side uh, does a little bit extra job. But still, it's blowing uh, somewhat pleasant uh, cold air. So what might be the outcome of this uh, experiment is that uh, I will try to separate these sides into two different uh, parts. So we will have a cold uh, side part and uh, warm or hot side part and therefore I will put the hot air somewhere else like it, you would do it with a regular let's say air conditioner or a refrigerator where you separate the let's say hot and uh, and cold uh, spaces and by doing so I will try to see how can I uh, utilize this kind of cooler because now my impression is that Based on the calculations and stuff, I still state and I still say that you cannot uh, use this as an air conditioner. So you cannot make cold temperature in the wall volume of your room. So let's say 35 degrees outside, you will not be able to make 21 degrees inside. But as an additional step of comfort, you can blow uh, cold air on yourself uh, with this device and this is a small device and uh, this is very nice so for example if you are sitting next to the uh, computer or you are sitting next to the television you can watch the television while uh, being exposed to this nice cold uh, breeze and again this will not bring down the temperature in your room or it will not bring down the temperature significantly in your room but it will uh, provide some kind of comfort uh, for you, but uh, you have to sit like next to it. So right now I'm, I'm sitting in this direction, as you can see it from my hand. So it's blowing uh, cold air at me, especially now as I rotated it a little bit, and it feels quite okay. So it's not only that uh, I have the airflow from the uh, fan, but it's also a somewhat colder airflow, and that, that's very nice, so I, I can feel this. And uh, this can be used as a, let's say, personal air conditioner, but in terms of uh, real air, air conditioner, this is still not an air conditioner, because it's just, uh, it's just a localized uh, thing. And actually, if you are using it like this, so you don't separate the two parts, then you are just warming up your room because of course uh, due to the thermodynamics the laws of the thermodynamics um, this will always uh, cause losses so at the end of the day your room will be hotter if you have it like this but if you can uh, build some kind of exhaust around this and put the air somewhere else let's say outside of your uh, room right outside of the building that's even better uh, then uh, you can have a better effect. So now I just uh, try to expose this uh, thing to the air coming out from the... So I don't really know where to put it. I try to get some nice uh, readings. But this is basically just the air's uh, temperature which is, which is coming out. 
So you can see that it's not a big deal if I put it up when it is not exposed uh, to the airflow that much. You can see that the room temperature is now 28. So now I put it in the airflow here. So this is roughly four degrees difference. So it's it's not a big deal. And I, I put it right next to the outlet of this thing. So let's touch the metal. So you can see that this is still not that cold, but it's something, but, but you can see, so this is what I'm talking about always that uh, the, the temperature is not that cold here, the, the outlet temperature of the air. So now I found a better spot. So this is basically the outlet air. It's a bit uh, uh, difficult to, to see where to put your thermometer, but right next to the outlet of the heatsink, let's say it's around 22, 23 degrees, something like that. 21. But this is very close. But if I put it uh, a bit further, let's say, uh, you cannot see it, so you cannot be. So, so now it's, uh, let's say, 10 centimeters away from the uh, heatsink, but still in the same uh, line. So now you see that the temperature is not that cold than close to it. But of course, it gets mixed with the uh, hot air around the around the environment of this uh, thing. So this was the experiment basically. I just wanted to show you how this thing works and I will continue this. Uh, so in the next part, I will try to separate these things, the cold side and the hot side into two separate uh, uh, spaces or two separate areas and uh, see how we can play with the temperature and how we can play with uh, this kind of improvement of uh, the cooling system. So I hope you like this video, I hope you like this experiment. If you have any questions regarding this thing in general or, or something like that, or if you want to see something extra here, uh, let me know and I always read the comments. So when you leave a comment, just please wait a few hours or maybe a day because we are in different time zone and so on. So I will read your comment and uh, answer to it. So be patient, please. And uh, yeah, we will see how this can be improved. But uh, now as I did this experiment, I came up with some ideas that I want to implement. So let's see what I can uh, do with these things and uh, see you in the next video.